Well, my story begins in the year 1998 when the much younger, quicker, slimmer, more agile, all-American women's basketball player, ranked 11th in the nation, was taking an official recruiting trip to the University of Rhode Island. And being an elite athlete in the late 90s was equivalent to being a rock star of such, where pre-9-11, literally the first steps off of the airplane, I'm being swarmed by younger athletes asking for my autograph, and team moms offering me my favorite foods, the type of foods that you could eat and gain weight uh, 24 years later. <laughs> and then going straight from the airplane to tour campuses. And at Rhode Island, my next steps would be on the hardwood floor of their basketball arena. And the lights would dim, the music would start, an announcer would come on, announce my name, my hometown, add a few inches to my height, and slowly start to convince the 17-year-old me that this is where I should begin my journey. This is where I should chase the carrot and pursue championship. In championship, it's not a ring, it's not a trophy, it's not a belt, but championship is a perceived status. And the leaders of an organization will have coached me and trained me and groomed me to believe that the carrot was in fact one day I would become an equitable member or equitable partner of the organization an opportunity that I could not allow them to believe that there were 10 girls that were better than me or more deserving than I for that opportunity. And so after being in the gym, I go to the rec center and I play some pickup basketball with a few members of the, the team. And I'm playing some of the best basketball of my life. It was during the 11th game that my teammate passes me the ball and I fake like I'm going to swing to one side and then I go to pass it back. But my defender gets a hand on the ball, intercepts the pass, and dribbles towards her basket. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to foul you before I let you score on my turnover. So just beneath the three-point line, she takes a hard jump stop and she goes up for a shot. So I take a hard jump stop and I go up to block her shot. And on my way up, I feel every ligament and cartilage in my left knee snap. And on my way down, what I landed into was a significant trauma, but a trauma that transcended the physical. There was a psychological injury that occurred because in that moment, I lost my identity as an all-American women's basketball player proven by the change, the immediate change in affect of everybody in the gym. I had a spiritual injury because prior to that and throughout my career, I asked myself those existential questions of, will I be loved? Will I be accepted if I can't perform? And the harsh reality was no, because I was flown back to my hometown. And by the time that I came out of surgery, I'm coming out of the anesthesia, but not waking up from this nightmare. I had seen hundreds of scholarship offers be rescinded and reduced down to two. And the very first conversation that the adults in the room were having with me was, here's a black button, Bianca. The doctor says this to me. Here's a black button. And if you push that, that will be your pain relief. And you don't have to ask permission. You don't have to ask your parents. You don't have to ask the nurses. Just push the black button for pain. So a 17-year-old girl who just lost her identity is pushing the black button every time I open my eyes. Because I couldn't differentiate between the physical, the psychological, and the spiritual pain. Well, it didn't help that this was also when insurance was really good, so I spent about a week and a half post-surgery in the hospital, pushing the button every time that I was awake. And then a week and a half later, the doctor comes back in and says, Bianca, you don't have to go home, but you have to get out of here. And I recall holding on to the bed rails, sobbing, begging for him to let me stay. I said, I'm not ready, it still hurts. 
going through unknowingly at the time chemical withdrawals from injecting morphine into my 17-year-old body for a week and a half. And the doctors, they unclenched my hands, they put me into the wheelchair, they wheeled me out, they gave me prescriptions for painkillers. And I go home and I read the labels, it says, every four to six hours for pain. Again, what is pain? Every one to three hours. And it took two weeks before I ended up right back in the hospital, this time from an overdose. I woke up two days later, and again, the affect in the room changed. I lost my identity as an all-American athlete, and I also just lost my identity as a stable and sane person. Because the doctor says, Bianca, we think from your suicide attempt that you're experiencing something called bipolar disorder. Not one conversation about chemical withdrawals and dependency and how those symptoms are very similar to intensified depression and anxiety and thoughts of suicide. But bipolar disorder, what is this? This is the first time I've ever heard the word suicide, the first time I've ever heard the word bipolar disorder. How do you treat bipolar disorder? More medications that would change the biochemistry and how I dealt with stress for the rest of my life. And so with that loss of identity and being an elite athlete, you know, whatever coach says, whatever trainer says, whatever doctor says, you go with so that you can continue to pursue championship. You can continue to chase the carrot. So I adopted the new identity that the adults in the room formed for me, that I wasn't sane, that I wasn't stable, that I was injured and unable to perform. I was unwanted. I was lucky enough to be able to accept a scholarship offer and enter into a multi-billion dollar industry called the NC2A for my first real job, where the expectations of the employees of the NC2A is to perform no matter what you're going through. So you combine those circumstances with a predisposition for some serious mental health conditions and being a collegiate student athlete, college students, disrupted sleep, excessive alcohol consumption, poor eating habits, persistently and intensely volatile relationships. This is a recipe for a perfect storm. So I enter into the NC2A, and halfway through the season, I lose a teammate to suicide. I want to pause there and give you some statistics. In the year 2020, we lost just under 3,000 young people ages 10 to 19 to suicide death. In the same year, 2020, we lost just under 3,000 young people ages 20 to 24, so the transitional age, the college age youth, to suicide death. From January of 2020 to October of 2021, the suicide attempt rate for girls ages 17 to 24 increased by 50%. In October of 2021, the Coalition for Youth and Adolescent Mental Health declares that we are in a national state of emergency. Sports community, we're mourning the loss of an elite softball player from James Madison University earlier this week six weeks apart from an elite female soccer player that dies by suicide from Stanford University. Two of six elite collegiate athletes that have died by suicide in the last 13 months. So this conversation is more than necessary. And more than necessary for more than just our elite athletes. I'm also speaking to the performers in the room. I'm speaking to the high achievers, the people pleasers, the perfectionists. Anyone who abides by the core values that integrity above all things, excellence in all things that you do, and service and or performance before self because integrity is oftentimes defined by the amount of pain and suffering 
that we're able and willing to endure. And excellence is oftentimes confused with perfection. And service and performance before self is oftentimes expected to come at the complete sacrifice of self. Thus, we are all chasing the carrot. I implore anyone who can relate to what I'm saying today. I implore you to do these things, to help me dispel the myths that a complete sacrifice of self is required for championship. Help me dispel the myths that our mental, our emotional, and our behavioral health are binary concepts. And rather, let's understand that mental health exists on a spectrum. And there are stages to the spectrum, and we're, nobody's exempt from engaging this spectrum. It is the human condition that we are all adapting to traumas that we're exposed to consciously, unconsciously, directly, or vicariously on a daily basis. And the moments that we lose sight of our consumption, and not just food and water and beverage and substance consumption, but also consumption of messaging and of energy, the people that we have around us. The moment that we lose sight of that, management of that, is the moment that we enter into the spectrum and without prevention strategies, without interventions, without postvention, having the conversation after we've had or experienced a crisis, our dis-ease advances to diseases like depression, anxiety, stress, trauma, drama, where the end stage can be fatal. The end stages of those diseases is suicide. The healing has to begin with self. And this is something that I train and I speak about on a daily basis. After losing my teammate to suicide, I found purpose out of that pain, not before doing some self-sabotaging and experiencing the pain myself for years to come, the shame and the grief. But once my body completely broke down, and I was in Italy playing basketball, and I felt like I can't push myself to focus on the physical injury exclusively any longer. I found purpose in the pain. And in a really fun story that I'll tell you another day, I ended up living in Las Vegas, Nevada. And there I started an outpatient clinic to focus on mental, emotional, behavioral health, trauma-informed curriculum, and suicide prevention. And I developed this curriculum. I started speaking at workshops and conferences. I built a mobile health application and a program that I call Reach In Now. It's a resiliency program that I offer to school systems, middle schools, high schools, colleges and universities, athletic departments and teams. And the objectives of this program is to build resiliency, to start with the healing, and the healing starts with you. We are a champion of nothing, if not ourselves. Thank you.